Hi, I'm Paula Kenny from Love Your Nest Interiors. Today we're at Ferguson, our Ferguson show, our Cleveland area Ferguson showroom with John D. Rogatis. We're talking about the top three appliances that will influence your kitchen design. Why are we talking about these three? Because if you don't choose these correctly, it could alter your design or make you miserable for many years to come. So you want to get as much information as you can before you start to design your kitchen and the first thing you want to do is properly select your kitchen appliances. You want to come to a place like Ferguson, not your big box stores because they don't have appliance specialists there. They have, you know, some people that may or may not know a lot and they don't have the latest appliances. They still don't have slide-in ranges in stock. Like you can't even see one. So, and they don't have microwave drawers, the first thing we're going to talk about. So they are really behind when it comes to kitchen trends and what's the, the best things, the best possible selections for your kitchen. So you want to come to a place like Ferguson that has the latest and the greatest because you always want to be ahead of the curve when you're designing your kitchen. Because it's going to last for many years, I always tell my clients, you don't want to get what's current now. You always want to be ahead of the curve. And so, one of the things that um, greatly influences your design right now are the microwaves. Um, we, my favorite thing is the microwave drawer, so I'm going to show you, because not a lot of people have seen these, and it's a prerequisite for any kitchen that I've designed, it has to have a microwave drawer, <laughs> or at least the microwave in the base, because we're done with the microwave over the range. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's behind the time. We want to be ahead of the forward. time. That's yes. Right. So this is a microwave drawer, so open it for us, John. So All this right. is what it does. So it opens, you place your food in, you enter your settings, and then you close it, and it does what a normal microwave does. The good thing about it is it's in a base cabinet. This is in an oven cabinet, but it, it can be placed in any base cabinet. And it's out of the way, it's not a prominent feature like before, it was like, look at me, I'm the microwave, it was over the range, we're done with that. So you can either get a microwave drawer or you can just get a built-in microwave in the base. So that's generally the best choice if you're a family that still uses the microwave. There are a lot of people that don't, but there are a lot of people that still do. And if you have children or if you're elderly, it's always a good choice because He's anyone can reach that. That's so right. that's um, the first thing you want to consider is where you want your microwave and what type of cabinet. So you need to know that before you design your kitchen because it, it requires a certain type of cabinet. So that's the microwave. So the second appliances um, that we want to talk about that will greatly influence your design are ovens because either you're going to choose a double oven or you're going to have a steam oven, which John is going to tell us all about, or you might have a microwave convection oven. So the good thing is we're kind of moving away. Like I said, we always want to be ahead of the trends and ahead of the curve when it comes to designing your kitchen because you're going to have it for a long time. You don't want it to look dated in like two years. So. I always try to influence my clients is to go move forward. So typically um, in the kitchen, if you had ovens, you would have two double ovens. We're moving slightly away from that because now we have the steam oven, which you're gonna tell us all about why it's so great and why it's a great choice and why it's an, an option to use instead of having a double oven because it can serve two features. It can be a steam and convection. And you can still have a regular oven in the same amount of space versus having like three appliances or you can have a microwave convection oven. But I want you to tell us about the steam oven, what makes it so great, because it's the new latest and greatest The latest thing. and greatest. So okay. the steam oven is, it's basically, think of it as a regular oven, but it uses water, the steam, to just enhance food. So okay. do you like fresh foods? I do. Pizza. pizza. I heard it's really great for pizza. That's right, and mm -hmm. because it's a convection oven, mm -hmm. you know, it browns, if you're roasting a chicken, um, cookie pizza, like you said, mm -hmm. um, it just enhances and speeds up the cooking. And then it comes out perfect, like you don't have to. Yeah. Um, but a lot it of comes people, out like you cooked it the first time. Well, leftovers, right. it's good for leftovers. Leftovers right? is okay. perfect because it's putting the moisture back in the food, so it's not drying everything out like right. your typical okay. microwave. So, like if you buy prepared foods from Heinen, mm -hmm. you can put them in there, you can put them on a tray, yep. pretend you cooked it. Easy. Everybody will be amazed, yeah. right? Okay. I like a that. lot of people think it's too small. Okay. But you know, take out one of these trays, it's a good size. Like mm -hmm. you can get a nice size chicken or turkey in here. Mm -hmm. It's got a good amount of space. 
And you can have these three. Oh, one thing I saw that you can do with it is you can steam vegetables. That's right. You can put them on a tray, yep. steam your vegetables. Mm -hmm. And can you cook multiple foods at one time? Yes, you can. So that's the good thing about having the, the multiple several trays. And mm -hmm. with the convection, it won't interfere. There won't be any flavor transfer. Okay. Oh, nice. Good. And it won't slow down the cooking. Because mm -hmm. if you, in a regular conventional oven, if you put two things in there, you're done. Yeah. The cooking speed is off. You're like, it takes me two hours. Yeah. <laughs> with convection. Be, yeah, but okay. with this, because it's convection at steam, it's going to be a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just going to keep your foods brighter, more fresh, um, everything. I mean, it's a, it's a great piece. It's a great thing. And it's not, you know, you could use it as a traditional oven. Because mm -hmm. you can use it as convection yeah. only. Yeah. Okay. You can use it as so convection. So then that way it serves the purpose of having two ovens. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. Most people don't use double oven. No. You know, they think they want a double they think oven. They think they want a double that. oven because when you get ready to design your yeah. kitchen, all the things that you thought you wanted like five years ago, yep. it's over. Yep. So find out about what's going on currently mm -hmm. so you can get the new latest and the greatest. Yeah, and I always say you use a double oven like twice a year. Mm -hmm. It's like Thanksgiving, so, yeah, get a thanks lot of people over. So is it really worth it to I get it? So. Yeah, so it's better to get yeah. something like this. So tell us about the microwave convection oven, which I like personally because if you don't want to get a steam oven, yeah. more than likely most homeowners are going to have a microwave. And they're going to want, and a lot of people, you do want a double oven sometimes. And so yeah. that's why I love the microwave convection. And again, it takes up just only this little bit just of space. Just regular space. So you have your big oven, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, large turkeys multiple racks, mm -hmm. entertaining, but then you have your regular microwave, which has convection, so think of it as a second oven. Yeah, I love it. You know, so again, if you want to just cook your normal everyday meals, you don't have to heat up a full-size oven, you can do it in the convection. Okay. Now, in this convection, are you re able to use convection and convection? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because and before I had a convection, I'll just tell you about my experience with convection. Uh -huh. Before I had one, I'm like, oh, who needs that? But now I won't cook. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you learn to cook with it, rule of thumb, because the convection, when it's doing, you have the fan in the back cir circulating the air, mm -hmm. you know, keeping the moisture in the food, browning. Um, a lot of people are intimidated, but they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. You know, rule if of I thumb. If I can is figure it out. Anybody can. Anyway. <laughs> All right, good. So, the third appliance we want to talk about are refrigerators because yes. there's this whole big debate about whether you should do counter depth or full depth. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go counter depth because they're afraid they're going to lose space. Mm -hmm. um, I Again, I say you always want to be ahead of the curve and the curve is going towards more flush, streamlined yeah. look. You don't want this big gigantic refrigerator sticking Sticky out on, on the side. Yeah, so let's take a look at built-ins. Now, do we have a, you have a traditional I have, fridge in the showroom? Well, do you want to look at the counter depth first? Let's look at the counter depth. French door, which is probably the most popular. You know, they still do the side by side with the mm -hmm. French door. Mm -hmm. People seem to like. They get a lot of that fridge space, the width, and then you have your bottom freezer. Um, this particular model has the internal water in the fridge. That's nice. It's not nice. in the door anymore. Yeah, so it's not messy. Mm -hmm. It gives you more space in the fridge, mm -hmm. and you have your ice. You'll have ice in the so. freezer. Um, you know, and compared to a normal size fridge, it's about. 0.3 cubic feet less. less which but that's why people don't want it. They yeah. always think that the counter that they're losing so much space, they're afraid to do it, and they don't. And it, it is counter depth, but although the door the sticks door out, sticks out but you right past the counter. But let's show them the difference between what a counter depth looks like, nice and streamlined, versus traditional. So here's oh, yeah. your traditional mm -hmm. depth. How much? This sticks out past. That's just, a cabinet. It's, I mean, it's nice it's because okay. this design, it's yeah. built in. It sticks out, but it just looks so much better, so much cleaner to do a counter depth. And again, that's where we're going. You always want to be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, the other thing I wanted to show um, were the built-in refrigerators because the, a lot of those are taller. So yep. You're gonna gain cubic feet by using those. And those are true cabinet depth. True cabinet mm -hmm. depth. Um, so let's take a look at those real quick. Yeah, we can look over here. So lots of sleeker, built-in, mm -hmm. and so, taller. So let me tell you why I love these because this is a 30. 36. Is this a 36 one? Yeah. Okay, so 36 Y, you're going to get that much, even if you do a 30. 30. So say, so what? I could be wrong. It's 30. I think it's a 30. <laughs> you're right. Maybe it's a 30. John, come on, John. Because it's available in a 36 I know, I, but, I'm, but that's why I love it, because with the 30 inch, you get all of this space. And typically, if you're, you know, have space constraints and that kind of thing, to do a built-in 30 inch fridge, you get so much more space mm -hmm. than if you don't have to do a 36 because everybody's like 36, I have 36, I need the space, you know, so we've been so used to that. But this look is streamlined, it's sleek, it has a lot of space, you get all this space in the freezer. Yep. That one has an ice maker. Yes, so there's no water in this one, but it does have the ice in the freezer. So when you do have space constraints and you are concerned about having a larger fridge, a built-in Fridge is the way to go because you're going to get a lot of height and you're going to get a, a close to the same cubic feet of storage as you would in a 36. That's right. So, well, granted, if you do a 36 built in, you're going to get even more than you would in a typical residential refrigerator. So, thanks, John. You're welcome. So, if you have any questions or comments, post them below. But thanks for joining us on our Facebook Live. We'll see you next week. John D. Right. Dear right. Goddess. Come visit the Ferguson showroom in Cleveland. We're so excited to have a Ferguson showroom. We've, I've been to them out of state, so I was excited when we finally got one. They have specialists here that can help you. They're going to give you the most current, up-to-date information right. for your kitchen design. And remember, the first step in designing your kitchen is making a great selection for your appliances. Until next week, I'll see you then.